Hey, welcome back. Kickstarter used to be the place that aspiring entrepreneurs went to launch, validate their products and bring them to market. But in the last three years, I've noticed a dangerous trend that in this video, I'm going to reveal why I think that you need to reconsider using Kickstarter this year. So if this is something that you are actively pursuing or working on, be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss the next episode that we release. Hey guys, I'm Kirsten Ross. I'm an e-commerce strategist that works with people just like you to launch scale million dollar brands. And we got started back in 2015 launching crowdfunding campaigns. I have extensively used Kickstarter and Indiegogo to launch dozens of products with our students and clients. And to this day, we've raised over $5 million doing it. So if you are someone that has a new venture or an existing brand that you've considered using Kickstarter, but you don't know if it's the right fit for you, let me know below and let's dig into this video to talk about why I think you should reconsider using Kickstarter as your launch platform. And then be sure to stay to the end because we are going to give you an alternate strategy that you can use if you decide not to move forward with your crowdfunding campaign. All right, in this video, I am going to cover three reasons why I think you need to reconsider Kickstarter and we might even throw in a bonus tip at the end. Okay, point number one, oversaturation. Over the last 10 plus years, Kickstarter has become the go-to platform and method for small businesses to get funding for their products. And this has really popularized crowdfunding as a way to skip investors and go straight to market and get people to pre-order your product in advance in order to pay for your inventory and then deliver product in a few months. There are so many benefits to doing a crowdfunding campaign from the social proof to the audience on Kickstarter, the amount of organic traction you can get on their platform, and really the connections and market validation that it gives you. But in the last three years, because it's become so popular, I believe that Kickstarter has become oversaturated. And I wanna talk about in this point why that actually matters. So first off, the power of Kickstarter is in its community. Kickstarter's big, thing is their backer community where they have over 17, 18 million people that come back every year, look at products and potentially back more products to get what is known as like a super backer status. And it's your ability to tap into that community that is going to give you really a snowball effect and cause you to get a lot of organic pledges coming in off the platform. When somebody is looking at launching a product, they instantly think of Kickstarter, maybe not necessarily only for the funding aspects of it, but because of the built-in audience that Kickstarter has. I want to talk about that a little bit and how you get in front of that audience. Doing a successful Kickstarter campaign comes down to having a product that's market tested and validated and also being able to set yourself up for success by understanding how Kickstarter works. Because there are so many campaigns live on Kickstarter and launching every single day, Kickstarter has a algorithm that helps them figure out which campaigns are popular and which ones should be seen by more people. Now, this algorithm has two factors that it really searches for. It looks for great content for its users. Great content comes down to popular campaigns in terms of how much they've raised, in terms of relevancy to the backer, in terms of how much traction this is getting. And the other side that they care about is making money. So when you look at campaigns that get traction and are to be discovered by its backers, Kickstarter their algorithm is gonna determine one of those two factors to say, all right, so is this a popular project that our community tends to be liking? Great, let's show them to more people. And also, is this campaign performing? Meaning, is it making money? Because Kickstarter's model is that they take 5% off of every dollar that you raise on their platform as a matchmaking fee. So any campaign that falls in that criteria will get ranked and boosted. However, why does oversaturation fall into this? The more campaigns that have become that have launched on Kickstarter, the more popular Kickstarter becomes, the more competitive the platform becomes. This means that in 2022, it is harder than ever to compete and get eyeballs on your campaign because you have not only so many more projects launching, but you've got a ton of well-funded startups and a ton of brands that you are now competing with that have deep pockets to pay for marketing, to be able to have a bigger turnout, to be able to rank faster and be able to, to get the eyeballs. Whereas if you don't have deep pockets, it is nearly impossible to compete, especially in the popular categories. So that is number one, oversaturation. This brings me to point number two. 
which is the price to play to be on Kickstarter and have success on Kickstarter and rank in front of their community and stay ahead of all the well-funded startups is really, really, really high. And it's getting even more high as more competition comes in, as more eyeballs come on the platform. So I want to talk a little bit about what goes into a successful Kickstarter campaign into the financial side. So when I say price to play, you can't actually pay for advertisements on Kickstarter. So when I talk about the price to play, I'm talking about what has to, what you need to financially invest in the campaign to set you up for success. So as we mentioned in point number one, that over, with oversaturation, Kickstarter has an algorithm that figures out what kind of content is profitable for the platform and being enjoyed by their users because they need their backers to come back. The backers are really the life or customers that buy on Kickstarter are really the life of a Kickstarter platform. So when you have those two factors, you have this thing called the Kickstarter algorithm that helps essentially make or break your campaign and decide how much you trend, how much you're seen by their organic audience. So what goes into a successful Kickstarter campaign? When you look to do a Kickstarter campaign, the biggest mistake people make is assume that because Kickstarter has this big built-in organic audience that you don't have to do any advertising. You just show up and if you've got a great product, Bob's your uncle. Um, I just really want to say that. But in saying that, that is absolutely not how it works. And the difference that separates brands from being successful on Kickstarter versus not comes down to the amount of preparation they do in advance of their campaign. So what do I mean by that? To have a successful Kickstarter campaign, you need to come into your launch with a big wait list, a big email list, a big audience of people who are ready and excited to buy your product. When you do that and you spend two to three months building up this audience and then you launch on Kickstarter, you need that audience to convert a certain percentage of your pledges, meaning you need to have a certain amount of success on day one of your campaign so that Kickstarter's algorithm will pick you up and start to show you to more people on their platform, creating that snowball effect or essentially getting those organic pledges on the platform, okay? But as kind of stepping on top of point number one with oversaturation, the problem with oversaturation is that because you have so much competition on the website, it means it's harder and harder to stand out in a sea of projects, which means the price that you have to put into the campaign, your wait list has to be bigger, and the cost of Facebook advertising is more expensive than ever because of the amount of advertisers on the platform. And so you have this point where you have to build this big email list, it's costing you a lot more than ever before, and not to mention that, but once you are actually on Kickstarter, um, if you bring in 20% of your pledges from your organic pre or from your pre-launch efforts, you still have 80% of your goal to make up. And Kickstarter is not going to give you 80% of your goal. What it looks like is you need to line up your pre-launch efforts to bring in about 20% on day one if you're if you're targeting over a six-figure campaign, and then assume that the Kickstarter um, community is going to bring in an additional 20 to 30 percent of your pledges, which means you have up to 50 percent of your traffic and your pledges covered. But how do you get the other 50 percent of your goal? Through paid acquisition, meaning you need to continue to do paid advertising through Google, through Facebook, maybe influencer uh, partnerships or press to bring in the rest of the traffic. And because of that, when you look at how much you're going to have to put into a waitlist, campaigns that are looking to raise $100,000 expect to put in no less than $20,000 building your email list if you're starting from scratch. And then you're likely going to have to spend another 15, 20, $25,000 on ad spend during the campaign to bring in more traffic just to get that 20 to 30% from your Kickstarter audience it organically if you do everything right. So, so when we break down the costs of a campaign that wants to raise $100,000 for inventory purposes, if you end up spending $20,000 to build your wait list, another $20,000 for paid ads during the campaign, five to 10,000 for the video, where does your inventory get paid for? And oh, not to mention if you are paying an agency or you have a team helping you with this launch. So your costs really, add up to a point where, this brings me to point number three, where because your costs to rank and get into and play the Kickstarter game 
are so high due to the amount that you need to invest to rank on the platform through your wait list through and because of how many brands are coming in off of really on the platform, um, you are competing with well-funded startups that have deep pockets or existing brands that have big audiences. So as your success is so highly dependent on how well you do your pre-launch, how big your wait list is and how well your ability to convert that wait list on the first day of your launch to then rank on Kickstarter, to then still have to drive ads to the platform, it is such a high cost to pay that this actually puts your startup at risk. Let me explain. You, in a $100,000 campaign, if you end up spending $50,000 just to market the thing and rank on Kickstarter, where are your inventory costs gonna be paid for? When you have inventory that needs to be paid for, let's even say that on your Kickstarter campaign, you end up breaking even on your costs. And through 100K, you're able to get the first run of inventory paid for, you're able to pay for the marketing and build the audience and you get the social proof. What then happens after your Kickstarter campaign is you don't have any cost to, well, any operating cost to cover the next six months. And how are you gonna pay for another round of inventory to keep going? It's this cost to play that's so high that is putting certain startups at risk because they don't know what they're getting into. Now, I know I am making an argument that uh, it sounds like nobody should do Kickstarter, but actually I think that Kickstarter can be really good for you because of the validation, because of the social proof benefits. But I feel that if you are not a well-founded startup, with deep pockets, if you don't have a, an audience going into this, you are going to have to pay a massive, massive price to build your audience from zero that if you don't have additional capital to cover inventory, it can put your startup at risk. So this brings me to my third point, which is lack of trust. So because a ton of startups launched and spent way more money than they expected to on advertising, likely ended up losing a bunch of money on the campaign and not having a backup funding source for additional inventory or what or anything if your your manufacturing goes over budget. This caused so many Kickstarter campaigns, so many crowdfunding campaigns to not deliver either at all or for months or even years later than they originally thought. And so because of this, there is a general lack of trust with the Kickstarter community, with crowd, like with crowdfunding backers in general, because they are like, well, if I buy this, how do I know I'm actually gonna get it? So backers are getting a lot smarter with the campaigns they end up backing. And if you are able to, if you've already started manufacturing or if you are already, um, you are already far enough in the process that you know you can deliver within two to four months, it's game. Otherwise, you are likely going to run into a ton of issues that can cause people to your backers to get angry, um, dispute charges, et cetera, et cetera. So in summary, if you were considering bringing your product to Kickstarter, I recommend taking a really good look at your finances to see if you are able to still bring your product to market and pay for inventory um, outside of the money raised, okay? And definitely reconsider that. So in summary, I believe that most brands should not crowdfund their product because it just financially doesn't make sense. However, some products absolutely crowdfund. Crowdfund if you have deep pockets, if you have an existing audience, if you are a well-funded startup, okay? And uh, we're not gonna cover it in, in this video, but if you'd like me to go through a video on what kind of products should be launched on Kickstarter versus not, let me know below. Just know that most people, if you don't go in with a realistic budget and a backup funding plan, you're very likely not going to be happy with how much you raise, how much it costs you, and likely go into heaps of debt causing your startup to go to risk if you don't have a way to pay for your inventory or operating costs or subsequent inventory runs. This is all sounding pretty glum, right? I hope you didn't get to this point in the video and you're like, oh my God, I was relying on the funds from Kickstarter. Now, how am I supposed to pay for inventory for my product? As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I have a method that we have been testing and proven that allows you to get almost the same benefits of Kickstarter from a financial standpoint without having to invest the amount that we talked about that you need to go to Kickstarter. Here it is. So what you do is you use a pre-order model on your website. So instead of 
option one, which is going to Kickstarter, spending months building up this big wait list that you've paid thousands of dollars for to launch that product before you see sales, what you can do is actually set up a storefront and start driving traffic to it and collecting pre-orders. The difference is you can get revenue in, you can validate your product within weeks as opposed to months. And my favorite part about this is that you don't need to build the wait list. That's right. When you set up on your own website, say on Shopify, you're able to take the money that you were going to spend on building an email list and you can drive that for direct customer acquisition on your website, which means you're able to, with a more conservative testing budget of say two to $5,000 in your first few months, you're able to drive enough traffic to your website, see who your target customer is, see who is buying your product and look to scale slowly from there. There are definitely differences being that with Kickstarter, you have this big campaign, you've got a lot of social proof, but there is a massive price tag up um, that is associated with that. On the other side, if you are looking for market traction, if you're looking to get customers to pre-order your product to cover your first round of inventory and build your customer list slowly, but way more profitably and way faster, that is going to be where you should definitely consider the Shopify pre-order track. So, and even it doesn't have to be Shopify, but just taking pre-orders on your own website. So if you are interested in learning a little bit more as to whether this method should be applied to your business, check out some of the resources below, or you can also schedule a call with my team and I, and we can walk through and help you make that decision whether Kickstarter makes sense for you or whether you would like to explore a more pre-order method on your own website. But apart from that, thank you for subscribing. Oh, wait, you're not subscribed? Well, thank you for subscribing. We release regular content like this to help you launch and scale your e-commerce brand. So be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this content and hit the bell for subscribing so you don't miss another episode.